as you might already know, a chromosome is nothing more than a collection of many different types of genes. And a gene is nothing more than a sequence of nucleotides that codes for some specific protein. Now, proteins are very important macromolecules. They're used by the cells of our body for many different types of processes and many different types of reactions. Now, there are many examples of different types of diseases that are a result of abnormalities that exist on either the genes of the chromosomes or the chromosomes themselves. So, in this lecture, we're going to focus on a specific type of genetic disease, genetic disorder, known as autosomal recessive disease. Now, before we examine four specific examples of human autosomal recessive diseases, let's actually recall and define what we mean by an autosomal recessive disease in the first place. Well, recall that in every single somatic cell of the human body, we have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. One of these pairs is known as the sex chromosome. So in males, we have the X and the Y. In females, we have the X and the X sex chromosome. And the other 22 pairs of homologous chromosomes are known as autosomes. And so what we mean by an autosomal recessive disease is that genetic abnormality exists on one of the genes or both of the genes on the autosomal homologous chromosome pair. So this is a type of abnormality that exists on autosomes and not on sex chromosomes. So let's actually define what we mean by recessive disease. So a disease is said to be recessive if only the homozygous recessive individual, the homozygous recessive genotype actually creates that particular phenotype for that particular disease. So a disease is autosomal recessive if only the homozygous recessive individual for that particular trait expresses that phenotype for that disease and the genetic abnormality exists on the autosome and not on the sex chromosome. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following three diagrams. So we basically have an autosome on which both of these genes are fully functional and they're represented by uppercase D's. So this is homozygous dominant and a homozygous dominant individual will have a normal phenotype and they will not be a carrier for that particular disease. In the case of the heterozygous individual, because we have at least one of these alleles, at least one of these genes on one of the autosomal chromosomes is normal, uppercase D, this, uh, this individual will have a normal phenotype because they will be able to express that particular protein that is needed for that cell. Now, the other gene is abnormal and that's why it's lowercase d and that's why it is said to be a carrier of that disease. Now this is the only genotype that will actually express the disease and that's because both of these autosomes, both of these homologous chromosomes have a non-functional gene that is given by lowercase d and so they will not be able to produce that fully functional protein that is needed by the cell. So now that we know what we mean by an autosomal recessive disease, let's quickly look at four individual examples. Now, we're not going to go into too much detail on each and every one of these diseases. We'll simply go to discuss briefly what they actually mean. Let's begin with phenylketonuria. So what exactly is PKU? Well, under normal conditions in individuals who are homozygous dominant or are heterozygous, they have this gene that codes for a special protein that breaks down the phenylalanine amino acid into another amino acid known as tyrosine. So let's suppose that inside the somatic cell of, our bo of, of my body, I have this particular genotype. So what that means is, because I have at least one of these normal genes, that gene will be able to code for a special protein that breaks down, that basically converts phenylalanine into tyrosine. 
So every time I ingest the phenylalanine, my body, my cells will have this enzyme to convert it into tyrosine. Now, in homozygous recessive individuals, however, they don't have that proper gene that is needed to form that enzyme. And as a result, that enzyme will not be able to convert the phenylalanine into tyrosine. And so instead of converting the phenylalanine into tyrosine, what our body will do is it will convert the phenylalanine into toxic substances. And as a result, over time, the accumulation and the buildup of the toxic substances will damage the central nervous system. And that will lead to many different types of mental abnormalities and mental disabilities. So this is what we mean by phenylketonuria. It's one example of a human autosomal recessive disease. Now, let's move on to sickle cell anemia. Now, in sickle cell anemia, the individual, once again, is homozygous recessive. And in this particular case, they basically have a non-functional gene. So basically, the gene codes for a protein that is not fully functional. And this protein happens to be a protein that is very important in our body. This protein is hemoglobin. So normally, hemoglobin binds oxygen in the lungs and it unloads that oxygen in the tissues of our body and then it returns back into our lungs to pick up more oxygen. Now, in individuals with sickle cell anemia, what happens is the amino acid number six on the beta subunit chain, remember hemoglobin consists of two alpha units and two beta units, so in individuals with sickle cell anemia, the glutamic acid amino acid at position number six on the beta subunit of hemoglobin is replaced by valine. And what that does is it changes the hydrophobic properties of hemoglobin. Now, that's not really a problem when the hemoglobin is bound to oxygen, but as soon as the hemoglobin unloads that oxygen in the tissues, what happens is the three-dimensional shape of that hemoglobin changes as a result of that valine amino acid. And so what happens is, because the red blood cells are filled with these hemoglobin molecules, and because these hemoglobin proteins change their shape, the entire red blood cell also changes its shape. It changes its shape from a, bon a biconcave shape to a sickle, half moon shape. Now, because of this shape, these red blood cells, the sickle red blood cells, can actually aggregate together and they can form clogs, clots inside the veins of our body because it's inside the veins that our red blood cells have unloaded that oxygen. So the sickle cells slow down the blood flow in our veins and they can clog the veins of our body, leading to tissue damage, which can be very, very painful. <clears throat> painful. Now, let's move on to the third type of autosomal recessive disease found in humans known as cystic fibrosis. So sickle cell anemia, by the way, is very prevalent in African American population. I believe one in 12 African Americans living in the U.S. are heterozygous for this particular <clears throat> disease. On the other hand, cystic fibrosis is much more prevalent in white individuals and in the U.S., one out of 20 white individuals are living with the heterozygous genotype for this particular condition. So what exactly is cystic fibrosis? So just like PKU and sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease. So an individual will have the disease and will show it if they are homozygous recessive. So people with this condition basically lack that proper gene that is needed to synthesize an important chloride ion channel because they have two of these recessive alleles on some autosomal homologous pair. Now, as a result, there is an excessive buildup of this very sticky, very thick and very viscous mucus that is found in the passageway of the lungs as well as in our liver, in our pancreas and in our small intestine. So as a result of this 
thick mucus layer, our body cannot actually rid itself of this mucus layer properly. And what happens is there is a buildup of pathogenic agents in those mucous membranes. Remember, the entire purpose of the mucous membranes in our lungs and other parts of our body is to trap pathogens and keep the pathogens from entering our body. But because of this thick layer of mucous membrane, as a result of cystic fibrosis, those bacterial agents and pathogens end up spending way too much time in the mucous membrane, and that can basically create many different types of infections. So our body's inability to rid itself of the mucous membrane can increase the rate of infection and lead to many other respiratory and digestive problems. And finally, let's look at Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is another example of the human of a human autosomal recessive disease. So individuals with Tay-Sachs disease typically begin showing symptoms by age one and usually die before age five. So this is a very, very dangerous type of autosomal recessive disease. Now, these individuals, individuals that are homozygous recessive, basically are individuals that lack the gene that codes for a special enzyme that breaks down fats in the brain cells of our body. And because those lipids, those fats, are not broken down properly, they basically build up, they accumulate in the lysosomes of our brain cells. And that accumulation eventually leads to many different types of problems, for example, blindness, as well as mental disability. So we see that these different types of autosomal recessive diseases are very, very dangerous. And normally, autosomal recessive diseases act very quickly. They usually act in the first few months or the first few years of our life, of that individual's life. So once again, for examples of autosomal recessive diseases, are phenylketonuria, sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, and Tay-Sachs disease. And what each and every one of these diseases have in common is the only time they express the phenotype for that disease is when that individual has a homozygous recessive genotype for that particular trait.